We have a really great program called Creative Response and Insights, um, where we invite other professionals, whether they are um, you know, on the more academic side in terms of curators or our historians. We also invite in um, restaurateurs and uh, dancers and poets to respond mm. to the view. And it's so interesting because you get to learn from these, you know, different people. You get to learn the work from different perspectives. because today I have Janelle Hazard, right, from Tefra ICA. Did I get that right? Tefra yes. ICA? Yes. Formerly known as Grace, right? Grace Arts. And, you know, I'm so excited to have you here, Janelle, because my mom's an artist. Uh, this is, you know, the blueprint has been put in me and my little sister over forever. And arts is such a special uh, part of our community. And, and when Kim told me that we're going to be talking today, I was like, awesome. Right. So I'm going to learn something and I'm excited about learning something. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Well, I, I know that Grace has gone through a rebrand. Right. Mm -hmm. And so why don't we talk a little bit about that rebrand and, and uh, uh, Tefra uh, ICA and, and how that all came about. And, and probably people watching this may not even know of Grace before. So why don't we kind of start there? and kind of walk us through a little bit. Sure, sure. So GRACE, so Greater Rest and Art Center, um, GRACE is the acronym for Greater Rest and Art Center. It was founded in 1974 by a group of rest and artists um, in Reston, Virginia. And the organization has always been very much acquainted with providing art experiences through the community. And mm -hmm. the last several years, the organization has grown in way between our programming to our exhibitions to the um, the persons and professionals and art historians and uh, curators and artists that we engage that um, this rebrand just became really really desirable for um, the current board of directors and the former executive director um, I've actually been with the organization since last March so almost a year now but the rebrand was well underway uh, before I joined the organization, and that's actually one of the reasons that um, Grace was so was so appealing to me is because of their uh, their interest in continuing to grow and expand their reach and impact. And so um, the rebrand was a professionally led process. We worked with a, a naming company called Polywalk Agency, who helped us come across the name. Uh, Tefra Institute of Contemporary Art, and I'll dive a little bit into that in a few minutes. But um, we also worked very closely with a lot of our community members, so our audience. We actually invited them in to help us uh, decide on the name, uh, as well as our board of directors, of course, um, a lot of our major sponsors and partners. Um, it was a big collaborative process. Uh, Ruth Abraham's design designed the new logo for Tefra Institute of Contemporary Art. And um, so it was a big collaborative process, and we're really proud about that uh, for being able to engage so many people that were important to us. And that all took place, you said, over the last the rebrand. Obviously, it's been in the works for a long time, but when did when when did the switch actually occur? The switch happened mid January, so about a month now. Um, but the, okay. the process took about two or three years I would say but yeah we're about a month in and it's been very exciting lots of interviews like this and you know opportunities to share more about our, our future and uh, what we're doing so it's exciting well tell me about the mission 
right? What is it that you, what, what is the mission of the organization? Well, I'll first talk a little bit about the name. So Tefer actually represents ash and rock particles that are uh, expelled from geothermal eruptions. That sounds very complex, but you can really think about um, volcanic eruptions, essentially. And for us, Tefra, Tefra as, as this like ecological matter actually nourishes the ground. Um, it, it helps produce fertile soil and crops. And for us, we saw symmetry in that term and how it relates to art and how art too represents uh, growth and nourishment uh, to the community. And then the Institute of Contemporary Art portion is a term also known as ICA in the art world. Um, and it basically is growing in currency. It immediately associates us with peer organizations that are already a part of this um, national and international cultural dialogue. And there's a strong intellectual plant, uh, I'm sorry, a strong intellectual component um, with ICAs too, which is pretty much what Grace has already been doing. So this name really captures the essence of the organization and helps us better align with our mission. And, yeah. um, go ahead. No, I was gonna say what wonderful. And, and it, it looks like um, a lot of thought went into this, right? It was a collaborative effort to, to come up with a name. How has the community responded to it, right? Tell me a little bit about that. Well, the community has responded exceptionally well, which is really reassuring. Um, one thing we wanted to make sure that was clear to the community is that we still are Reston. Um, we still reside in Reston. As I mentioned, the organization was originally founded by Reston artists. So we wanted to make sure that we still have that strong tie to Reston um, and that we're simply looking to continue to expand and grow and bring more people to, to Reston and more artists and more attention to the organization as a whole. So um, luckily it's been really great both locally and regionally and nationally. Um, so we one thing that's been happening with us that has helped us uh, usher in this rebrand is that we've been getting national attention from our content. Mm. So our exhibitions and programs have been reviewed by um, uh, the New York Review of Books recently with our Maura Dreyer exhibition. Um, Hyper Allergic and Art Forum are two national contemporary art publications that have reviewed um, some of our some of our content. So um, it's been really great. And I actually have a, a, a I guess a, a social media feature coming up soon with the contemporary arts publication called Artnet. Um, which is pretty major for us. So we're looking forward to that. That's awesome. That's awesome. And so tell me, what does the future look like for you guys? What What's the vision? What are you, what are you guys aspiring towards? Well, ultimately we want to continue to make an impact nationally. Um, we want to continue to foster this meaningful dialogue, um, contextualizing artists' work in the historical canon. And, um, explore experimental practices. So there's a there's a balance of kind of contributing to the art historical canon by introducing these works that are both um, strong in story, strong and in, in background, cultural heritage, um, and then mix, kind of mixed with this contemporary practice. And so what's really great about Tefer ICA in comparison to other organizations is that we have this flexibility and we're open to, to experimenting in terms of exhibitions and um, programming. We have a really great program called Creative Response and Insights um, where we invite other professionals, whether they are um, you know, on the more academic side in terms of curators or our historians, we also invite in um, restaurateurs and uh, dancers and poets to respond mm. to the view. And it's so interesting because you get to learn from these, you know, different people. You get to learn the work from different perspectives. And that's one thing that Tara is all about is, um, you know, in our logo, um, there's a shifted element, which to us represents that combustibility of creativity and that um, shifting of perspectives, opening of, of dialogue, broadening perspectives. So um, 
So that's one thing we we certainly are going to continue to hone in on is is kind of storytelling and um, letting people learn something new. The brand um, really made sense is an example of how the More and Dryer exhibition introduced an unprecedented partnership for us. So we actually partnered with um, the Phillips Collection in Washington, D.C., where they had a, a correlating exhibition talk called More and Dryer Back in Business. And that was curated by um, the former executive Lily Spill. But that partnership was you know, really important to us. And um, luckily, we were able to create an online viewing room which the idea behind online viewing rooms is that it allows you to experience the exhibition through images, through quotes, um, through text that sort of mimics the way you would walk through the gallery. So um, that's the idea behind that. We were able to offer very, very limited gallery appointments and um, of course have implemented hand sanitizing stations and things like that inside the, inside the gallery. But between online viewing rooms and virtual programs, um, again, those were creative, creative response programs and the insights programs were all taking place virtually, which has been really great actually, because I'm sure many people are experiencing this, but when you have a virtual program, your reach is actually organically expanded. Um, we've had people join us from Canada, um, from New York, um, I don't know what am I missing London even so it's been really great especially you know to help share share the rebrand and we hope we're able to, to keep that audience you know once things do go back in person and so one yeah. of the major just speaking about the pandemic one of the major um, major hits for us during the pandemic was that we have a Northern Virginia Fine Arts Festival. Grace has produced this festival for over the past 30 years, and we ultimately invite over 200 artists from different fields within fine art and craft to exhibit in the um, Reston Town Center. It brings over 20,000 people to the Reston Town Center each year, and it's Grace's annual uh, annual fundraiser. And so TEPRA ICA will continue the Northern Virginia Fine Arts Festival, but unfortunately last year we canceled it because of the pandemic. Um, but it was due to our generous sponsors that donated their sponsorship to us that we were able to, you know, thrive or at least survive, um, survive those challenges. So same thing with summer camp. We had to cancel our summer camp, which is also, um, a big source of revenue for us as a nonprofit. So um, we look forward to hopefully being able to host both of those things in some facet this year. We will. Uh, you know, I, I know that we're going to go back. I'm being positive, right? We're going to go back. We're going to be able to uh, be physically um, present and digitally enhanced, right? So it, it you know, we're, we're going to, we've all learned how to, you know, We've all learned that we can expand our reach, mm -hmm. you know, on a global scale um, mm -hmm. through doing things like this, right? And so I'm I'm optimistic. I'm excited, you know, about us being able to go back mm -hmm. and 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 but and at the same time learn from what's happened so that we can create a larger reach. And we've found, interestingly enough, we've found the same thing in our world where where you know, we might have an event and that event might have 10,000 people in it. And now that we are gone, we've gone virtually, we can, we're having 50,000 people show up for the event. Right. Right. Um, and so it's, it's wild how technology can kind of create that. Now I crave the day to go back and just I know. talk. Yeah. Just hang, yeah. you know, just hang out and, you know, walk a gallery. And, uh, and I think I shared with you that my mom, owns a small little gallery, uh, art gallery, and my mom is an artist. And so, you know, I'm like, mom, you got to go digital, right? You have to go digital. So it's all about pivoting and adapting, right? right. And then um, tell me a little bit about your your background, right? Uh, we, we chatted about it briefly, but you said originally you're, you were from Richmond. Is that correct? I am. Yeah. Originally, I'm from Richmond. I received my undergraduate degree from Virginia Commonwealth University. Mm -hmm. And I actually moved to New York shortly after that and worked for quite a while in corporate uh, fashion and beauty. 
So I actually worked for Macy's Corporate and Estee Lauder Corporation. Um, and this, this may seem a bit sort of random, but I actually left the country for the very first time when I was maybe uh, in my early 20s. And I left the country on an international modeling deal. Mm. So I lived in Milan, Italy and Germany and South Africa, essentially for four, for four years. And um, my undergraduate degree was focused in fashion, but it was really just incredibly, sorry about that. That's it, okay. was, it was full of art history. Um, so it was during my, during my time in South Africa that I actually realized that I wanted to pursue the arts a bit deeper. And so um, I started working at a gallery in South Africa called Blink, Blink Projects Gallery. And really helped, this was like early in their, their years and they have since um, grown to be one of the, the leading international contemporary art galleries. And um, I came back to New York, pursued my master at Sotheby's Institute of Art in New York, went on to work for UBS Art Collection, helping to manage their contemporary art collection of over 30,000 works. Um, including some of the most celebrated artists of today, like Ed Boucher and Basquiat and um, probably anyone you can think of. I mean, this is this is a collection that has been um, collected for several years, many, many years. Um, and then I found my way to DC and I worked for a while at Workhouse Art Center in Lorton, Virginia as their director of exhibitions and then con connected with uh, what was then Greater Reston Arts Center. and. It has been such a fantastic team and an organization to be a part of. And again, this is all during this like virtual time. So I think that says a lot that um, my experience has been so great considering that this is such a challenging moment. Um, so yeah, really excited to be here and excited about our future. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, and talk about kind of full circle, right? It's all, um, you know, welcome back home, I guess is what I would say, right? Coming from South Africa and Milan and all the rest. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing, right? So you take all those little flavors of everywhere you've been and you bring it back to the mm -hmm. tapestry of what we call Reston, right? And and being able to pour into our community through the arts, which is uh, simply amazing. Um, yeah. And so what would, to tell me maybe one or two initiatives that you guys have for 2021 that you would wanna know that you would want Reston to know about, right? So that we can get the word out and, and help amplify your voice to the marketplace. Absolutely. So I definitely want to share our next exhibition. Um, first, we just did this major floor renovation at, at Tefra ICA. And if anyone has ever been to Greater Reston Arts Center and previously, you know these signature terracotta huge floors and um, with the rebrands, we wanted to try to make um, any affordable upgrades we could to to kind of make that space feel new, especially um, as we all are optimistically going to be back in the gallery sometime this year. And so anyway, I just want to mention that the space feels completely different simply from this floor renovation, which we are so excited about. But also um, our next exhibition is with light and space artist Gisela Cologne. And she is um, a Puerto Rican artist. She is based in California. And um, her work is, is based on these light activated sculptures. And mm. they're uh, floor sculptures, they're wall works. And she refers to them as pods, monoliths, and elliptoids. Mm. And it's, these works don't have any lines for the visitor to rest their eyes on. They're all these kind of transformational um, mutable objects and they're layered, they're created through these optical acrylics and aerospace technology. And um, so it, it creates this prism of color. There's no paint used in her works. It's all about the layering of these optical acrylics that create this sort of optical illusion with your eye. And it's going to be an incredible experience, whether, you know, we have visitors in person or virtually. And, you know, her being with a, having a Puerto Rican background really contributes to this cross-cultural dialogue, which is really important to the organization. So I really hope everyone can keep an eye out for that edition. Um, it's, it's monumental for us. Uh, she, her work is in the collection of 
LACNA, the Los Angeles Community Museum of Art. Her work has been reviewed by Forbes and um, all the art publications, New York Times. Um, so very big deal for us and we're excited. That's Another awesome. Some Puerto Rican representation. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, on the board for NARIP, which is um, the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. And we're always looking for people that, you know, uh, of, of uh, Hispanic descent that are doing great things within, you know, within uh, our culture. And so uh, I'll make sure that I get the word out to them because I think that they would, they would love that. Thank you. That would be great. Yeah. And so um, you were going to say something else and I, I cut you off. I'm sorry. So there's two more things I want to mention. One is our Northern Virginia Fine Arts Festival, which I briefly spoke about earlier. So this will be our first time in two years due to the pandemic having the Northern Virginia Fine Arts Festival. It was originally scheduled for May, now taking place in September. But um, we moved it early in anticipation that that would better allow us the opportunity to host it in its full format. So especially for this local Western audience, please keep an eye out for the Northern Virginia Fine Arts Festival this fall. Wonderful, wonderful. You said that's in September? September, yes. September, great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, we will make sure we get that word out as well. Thank is you. There is there anything else that you would like for us to know, right? Anything else, any other initiatives? I want to make sure that I'm covering everything. Well, since you asked, I will mention one more exhibition that we're really excited about featuring Laurel Nakadante. Um, that is actually happening a bit simultaneously with the Northern Virginia Fine Arts Festival. Um, so if you're coming to visit the Northern Virginia Fire Arts Festival, you can hop into the gallery, hopefully, again, thinking that will be open, um, which features Laurel's, which will fe features Laurel's work. And she's a photographer, a filmmaker, um, mm. a performance artist. Her work focuses on sexuality and femininity and gender roles. Um, she explores voyeurism and interactions between um, herself as the subject. So this is again, another big deal for the organization. It's actually curated by our former executive director, um, Lily Siegel. Mm -hmm. And um, her work is at MoMA, it's in the Hirshhorn. Um, and we really look forward to welcoming her to the region as well. well. We're gonna make sure that we put all the links below. So I'm sure this is on your website, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll make sure that we put all the links below and get the word out to everybody in Reston and beyond, right? And help really market the rebrand because I think that's an important thing for Reston to, to know. And I'm just curious, out of curiosity, just to end, what is what does the new flooring look like within Grace? What 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 are the elements? Oh my goodness. So I think so if I had to describe the space before, I would say it's very warm in tone. Um and you know very comfortable which is great now we're kind of moving to this light and airy space it's clean it's minimal the floors on like a concrete gray it has gray ceilings as well so you're kind of transported into this very different space and i think very different from reston too um, it very much aligns us with new york galleries or international galleries um, so it feels very contemporary which we're excited about Awesome! I'm excited about that. And, yeah. and it's it's interesting when you were when you were describing it. I, that that's what I saw in my mind. But I was like, I have a bias towards contemporary and modern. So so I was like that. You know, but there there we go. Right. Well, awesome. Janelle, th thank you so much for spending time with Rest and Digs uh, today. And I, I appreciate you doing this virtual uh, interview. And at some point. We'll be able to do it live. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to meeting you in person sometime soon. I look forward to meeting you too. Thank you so much for having me. It's been such a pleasure. My pleasure. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.